Hi everyone, my name is Olivia. So you want to print Rizo, but you don't know exactly what Rizo is. So today we're going to learn all about Rizo, which is this machine right here. So the Rizo is a soy ink based printing machine, which is a little bit different than a laser printer. Laser printers are all those printers that you see kind of everywhere in schools, offices, staples, pretty much anywhere where there's a printer, it's probably a laser printer. And a laser printer uses toner and heat to fuse the toner on paper surface. The Rizo is actually an ink-based printing system. And what it uses is soy ink. The ink comes in these tubes. And as you can see, components, soybean oil. And if I open up the ink, it has this very thick toothpaste-like consistency. It's not, uh, it's not so much like watercolor that is super kind of watery and, it's just, and just gets absorbed into the paper, but it's more kind of like this kind of thick paste that dries, but then when it dries, it kind of just sits on top of the page. So that's important to note because if you go into your artwork with an eraser, you could actually take off some of that ink and also, that's important because you can actually, like, if you rub on it hard enough, you can actually smudge the page. So something to take note when you're printing something with very heavy coloration is you may inadvertently cause the page to smudge when you're handling it. And also when your customers buy your zines, they might get ink on their fingers when they're handling really ink-heavy pages. If you find that you have unintentionally smudged your paper surfaces and you want to clean it up, you can actually go back into it with an eraser to clean it up. But just make sure you don't uh, accidentally go in to your art with the eraser because it's also going to take off some of your art. You can only print Rizo on uncoated papers. So you can't actually print Rizo on those kind of glossy, shiny, smooth, papers that are commonly used for laser printers. So this is an example of coated paper. So as you can see, it's got that glossy, kind of coated looking consistency to it. So with Rizo, it has to be uncoated paper. So it's paper with this rough, uncoated texture to it. And you also have a lot of flexibility, so you can use colored paper. All right, so let's take a look at the machine and see how this machine works. So I just turned on the machine. This is a two color duplicator. So when I open up the machine, there are two slots for two different ink cylinders and ink colors. So this is my black ink cylinder. So now I have black and brown ink cylinders in the machine. And so this printer can now print two color in black and brown. Okay, so here's an ink cylinder, and on this ink cylinder, as you can see, there is a very thin sheet of rice paper material, and that is the master. The Rizo will read your art file, and it will burn very tiny holes into this very thin rice papery master material. So the soy ink gets pushed through this mesh, and where there are tiny holes burned into the master, it then gets pushed through the master, and the cylinder rotates and creates an imprint on a sheet of paper. So the paper will pass through the first cylinder, the cylinder will rotate and make a print on that page, and then it will go into the brown ink side. It'll pass through there, the brown ink will rotate and create an imprint, and then finally, the paper will have the two colors printed on it and then it will kind of rest there. As you can see, there is a limit to the size of the screen and the ink doesn't go all the way to the edge of the screen. There is a safe print area. It's about a half inch smaller than a regular tabloid size sheet of paper. You probably want to be even more conservative and even take it in a little bit further than that because otherwise you might get a bit of unevenness on the edges. Another thing to note is that, as you can see, the Rizo will ink up the whole master screen regardless of the surface area 
that needs to be printed. So let's say your print only has one tiny dot of black on the page, it will still ink up the whole screen in order to print out that one tiny black dot. And at the end of every print, at the end of every job, when I have to send a new file to be burned into a new master and then placed on the ink cylinder, the previous master will get pulled off of the ink cylinder and disposed of. So you cannot reuse these masters. And when it gets really busy, I actually end up burning a lot of masters. So this is a whole bag of masters that I have used up. Another defining characteristic of printing with Rezo is registration. When I send a job to be printed and it's more than one color, I have to register all the colors to each other. So it's actually super important to give me a little bit of space so that I can create registration marks for your artwork or to provide me art with registration marks on them. As you can see, here are my registration boxes with a slight bit of misregistration, but the final art still looks pretty good, so I would keep this. This registration mark shows that this piece of art is pretty perfectly registered, which is important because as you can see, this piece of art has very thin overlapping lines, and if it was even slightly misregistered, it's not gonna look good. Over on this side is an example of a piece of art that I would say would have a pretty high tolerance for misregistration because I think it would still look good even with a slight bit of misregistration. So that was a two color zine job. So I only had to register two screens in one pass. When you have a job that is more than one pass, say it's three or four colors and I have to physically take that stack of paper put it back through the machine and run it through a second time in order to overlay the third or the fourth color on top of it, there is a higher likelihood of misregistration because now I'm trying to register the third and the fourth screen to the first and the second screen that was already printed on the page. Here's an example of misregistration over two passes. So one way to mitigate misregistration issues is to create what in the screen printing world is called trapping, which is to color a little bit into your outlines. So here's an example. So as you can see, Greer has really thick black lines. When she put in these layers of color, she purposefully kind of colored into the lines so that if there is even a slight shift in the screen, it won't be as obvious and the whole surface area is still more likely to have color coverage. One thing to note during the printing process is the way the paper is fed through the machine is through this rubber roller. So the rubber roller looks like this and as you can see, it looks like wheels with track marks on it. So when you're preparing art for Rezo printing and you have a lot of ink coverage on this part of the sheet where the rubber roller feeds the paper into the machine, that roller will pick up some of that ink, which if you remember is very thick and never really dries. It just kind of sits on top of the page. It's gonna pick up that ink and it's gonna track it through the sheet. And that's something to keep in mind when you're doing more than one pass. It's important to try to keep that area clear or to keep it as light as possible to minimize the amount of tracking that might be caused by the rubber roller. If you're doing a three or four color job and track marks are inevitable because of the way your art is set up, just know that you can go back in and erase those track marks with an eraser. But again, you have to be careful not to erase into your actual artwork. So another thing to keep in mind when you're printing with Rezo is that you do not want to overload the page with a lot of heavy ink coverage because that causes a couple of problems. The first is that when you burn a master and it has a lot of holes and a lot of ink is going through it, what might happen is that this very thin sheet of paper will be saturated with ink and it's just gonna get stuck to the machine and I would have to physically take this sheet and peel it off the ink cylinder. So it could cause the machine to jam when you have too much ink on your page. The second reason why you probably don't want to do that is because it will cause irregularities in the ink. So it's not going to print even. So just something to keep in mind, if you want to fill a page and if you want to print a large surface area dark with a lot of ink on it, to try to tone down your opacity to about 70 to 80%. This is an example of a four color job. Greer's Stothers has used black, 
red, blue, and yellow for this scene. But as you can see, there's more than four colors on this scene because Greer was able to use her knowledge of the color chart to recreate colors like green and orange. So there's a lot you can do with overlaying colors. Here's actually the current Pin.Press color chart, which has all 10 colors that we have available. And so what we try to do with this color chart is show you how two ink colors look when they overlap one another. So here's an example of blue and you are taking down the blue 10% at a time in terms of grayscale values or opacity values. And here's 100% pink and you're also taking pink down 10% at a time. And so 50% blue and 50% pink looks like that. When you're working on your files, you can take a look at this color chart and you can see that if your artwork is totally black, this is gonna be the equivalent of what the other colors would look like when it's that dark on your file. Whereas if it's this dark in your grayscale file, then you know it's gonna be around this color when you print it in color. Once the screens have been burned and have been set on an ink cylinder and once all the registration has been performed, it doesn't take that much more time to just run a lot of pages and just print on a lot of pages. And the Rezo in general is a very high speed machine so it can do a lot of pages very quickly compared to a traditional laser printer. So as you can see, it takes a lot of time and care to set up a print job. And this is why printers will set up a minimum quantity order. I get requests from artists who are unfamiliar with this process and will ask to just print one copy or five copies of their print. But as you can see, it's not really efficient to do that with the Rezo. So that's it for this video all about Rezo. If you found it helpful, please like, subscribe, and leave an awesome comment in the comment section below. In the description for this video, I'm going to put a link to this studio's website, and also support me on Patreon. Out of time, back. Let's do that over. Stop, play. Okay. And a fun fact, I'm from the Philippines, so Pindot Press is actually supposed to be pronounced Pindot Press and Pindot is actually the Filipino word for press like push a button, press a button press, not printing press so it's kind of like a play on words misregistered I'm actually from the Also in the description section to this video, I will link. I will link to the website. You'll find a link. You'll find a link to this. You'll find a link to.